If you follow my website, I recently reviewed the PS4 game Watch Dogs. Well, I, I played it for PS4 anyways. I liked it, but there's a lot of things that I would change when making a sequel. So here I'm gonna run through my ideas for what I want from Watch Dogs 2. Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. I'm Adam Ryan Daniels, and today we're talking about Watch Dogs 2. So, in summary, what I thought of the game. Um, I liked it, but there was almost too much to do. Some of the side quests were repetitive. Uh, I didn't necessarily like how the online play kind of, in, kind of infringed on my single-player campaign. You know, I wanted to do a mission, and now all of a sudden someone's hacking me, and kind of got frustrating sometimes. I didn't like that when driving, there was no way to shoot from your car. Uh, sometimes the chases got really kind of repetitive as you're trying to kind of use the hacking to take them out. It became like just waiting for the next steam pipe or the next whatever got a little old. And then our hero, Aiden Pierce, was about as interesting as a brick. So, when Ubisoft is making Watch Dogs 2, what should they change? Let's start with the city. Uh, Chicago is interesting, uh, but it, we need something with more diversity uh, in terms of how it looks. So, yeah, we had kind of big city, and then we had small town, Pawnee outside. That's really kind of the two extremes we had. Why Grand Theft Auto V worked is that there were so many different types of environments. That you might be on the beach, then all of a sudden you're in the city, then you're out in the desert and the sand dunes, then you're up a mountain, you're in like a redwood forest. Like there's a lot of diversity in a pretty manageable area. So it's not impossible for Watch Dogs to try to recreate that. I'm not saying recreate that with a Southern California kind of feel, but there's other cities that might work. One of them might be London. So now you've got big city, you've got kind of the small cities on the outside, you've got kind of coastal cities. There might even be other areas of Europe that are within driving distance that they could tap into. Um, that, you know, hey, you take this and you end up in wherever. Uh, so Europe might give us some options. I'm from Oregon, so I always try to pitch Portland as being a really cool city for a video game. Uh, it has a very unique style, you know, the whole keep Portland weird kind of thing. So it could be really interesting to give that personality to a city in the video game. And it's very green there. And so the PS4, Xbox One, it would look gorgeous with that vibrant green color, kind of while you're driving around through the trees and everything. And then there's also coastal areas, there's big city areas, there's a lot in Portland that you can try to replicate. What about where you're from? Let me know if your city would be cool as a location for like this. If you've been somewhere that like this would be crazy for a game like this, sound off below. Another thing I'd change, like I said, one of my complaints was the vehicular combat. That really you were just kind of waiting for these moments to, okay, steam pipe, you know, and, and it, Car chases lacked excitement for me. Um, and what worked in games like Grand Theft Auto is that you can shoot out of your window, pop a tire, and now all of a sudden you're, you know, racing on foot. Like, that gives you some options. So I would vouch that they need to add some sort of mechanic where you can shoot out your window or something. I'm not saying weapons on the vehicle, but shooting a weapon from the vehicle would be a really smart move. If they want to ration this a little bit, they could tie it to the focus system where you need a certain amount of focus, kick into this mode, and now you're able to shoot with precision, you know, and then that mode is gone and you can't use it for a while. So something you save up for and you have to earn. And they could use the upgrade system to tie this to, you know, how long that focus lasts, maybe what types of weapons you're allowed to use, things like that would give you some tangible upgrades that you'd want to earn. Another thing they could use some tweaking is the crafting system. There were some craftable items that I used all the time. The proximity IED was my favorite thing in the game. Lay one down and now I'm covered. You know, I can worry about this business here without worrying about someone coming through the hallway because I have an IED. But there were also items I never used. I never used the jamming, you know, the stop their communications. I never used the scan to see where people were. Uh, I didn't even use the lure, though I can see why people would, but I never used it. So half of the crafting tree, I never used. And since I didn't use those, I wasn't super interested in buying those upgrades. So the skill trees, I was not as interested in. So, I think we should take a note from The Last of Us. Their crafting items were so essential to the game that they matter. So I think we need to keep the ones that are really important and vital, and then also work on kind of making the crafting items more important. So maybe it goes into the strategy before you tackle a situation that I know if I can get up to the satellite and use all my crafting items, now it blows out their communications. 
So I haven't fired a shot, but now I already have the advantage in this scenario. What if you knew vehicles were gonna come in and you could lay down nails in one of the alleyways? You know, there was a way that you could hack, I think like spike strips when you're driving around, but what about you being able to choose where they go down? That'd be a cool item that, okay, I think people are gonna come in this way or I hear them coming, but I can't deal with them. So here's some nails, you know, crafting items that mattered, that you could think out in advance, you know, lay things in certain places like you do with the IED and other uh, explosive items like that, that you have to think about where am I gonna use these and then you go into the scenario. Uh, more things like that. So overall, make crafting items that are useful, interesting, and allow you to put some more thought into how you handle a situation. My next piece of feedback is to incorporate assassinations more. In most cases, and in all of the most interesting cases, which were the gang hideouts, you had to take down the specific person without killing them, which requires a lot of stealth and a lot of forethought, but it also was kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. There were moments like criminal convoys where it's like, okay, take out this truck, and I'd blow it up or whatever, and then they would say, failed, you had to take him alive. And it kind of ruins the feeling. You just laid out this awesome trap, it goes off perfectly, but you kill the guy, and you're like, why can't I kill the guy? So I think weaving in more assassination missions. Here's your target, take him out. And maybe this is something that could make the morality scale in the game a little more interesting, that you can choose to take them out and it gives you some sort of reward, or you can choose to assassinate them and it gives you another type of reward. So you get to choose not only how you physically handle the situation, but how mindset wise you handle the situation are you going in to take them alive you going in to take them out or maybe they're just certain side quests that are targeted towards assassinating people i don't think these were in watchdogs but the side quests were not really super interesting to me so i might have missed them so let me know if there were missions that you assassinated people um, and if so were they good were the things we changed to that system uh, i'd like to see it work better um, and give you some more of that freedom now with freedom um, I'd love to see more actual role-playing game elements in the game. In Watch Dogs, you were given a character, Aiden, who was 0% interesting, and you didn't really have any choices in the game. So it'd be nice to kind of step back a little bit, give you the chance to create a character, because they're going to have already as much personality as Aiden did. So you decide... Here's what they look like, here's their name, gender, things like that, and then here's how I want to tackle the game. I want to focus on being an assassin. So when I go to missions, that's going to be my focus, that's the skills I'm going to upgrade. Or I really want to be a hacker, so I'm going to use these hacking systems more, I'm going to use stealth, I'm going to use surveillance, I'm going to go in using this technology. Or maybe I want to be a driver, so now there's these heists going off and I'm the one getting them out clean. It'd be cool to have choices you know, and maybe there's side quests that are kind of like guilds in traditional RPGs where I'm going to be a fighter, I'm going to be a thief, I'm going to be a whatever. But maybe it's I'm going to be an assassin, I'm going to be a hacker, I'm going to be a escape driver, whatever they're called. That'd be cool to have that sort of freedom. And it's not like we're replacing some super charismatic character. We're replacing nothing. So this would give you a lot of flexibility, some replayability. You know, the game would be totally different if you're going in using a totally different style. Um, and those of us that just want to drive can drive, and those of us that want to go in, kill everything can, but those of you that want to play stealthy and use technology and use these hacks can. And so getting the chance to create a character, we're already going to feel attached to them. So it's going to go a long way in making a character that we're interested in and that we care about. And finally, we want more freedom. The best missions in the game, in my opinion, were the gang hideouts. It said, there's the guy. Do whatever you need to tackle him, which, yes, I had some problems with. But it gave you tons of freedom. You know, you get to step back and you get to say, okay, how am I going to handle this? I'm going to go in this way. I'm going to go in through the roof. I'm going to use lures, whatever you want to do. But for every mission that gave you that freedom, there were a lot of missions that it was this facade of freedom. That, yeah, you can tackle this mission any way you want, but you have to go through this hallway to do it. You have to go in this way. But what weapons you use is up to you. That's not really a choice. So I'd love to see more, here's the building, the guy's in this floor, do what you need to do. 
Do you go in guns blazing on the first floor? Do you try to steal a helicopter going through the roof? Do you hack and not even enter the building at all? You know, give us more of those moments that allow us to do that. One of the things that worked really well in GTA 5 was the heist system, where you prepare for a mission and you decide, which route am I going to go? Am I going to go stealth? Am I going to go guns blazing? How am I going to use the people that I've met in this world? You know, maybe because I haven't met this hacker, this option is not available to me. You know, create options that give us different ways to tackle a situation. This way your missions line up with the character that you've created. So now it's not, I'm an assassin, but now the mission is requiring that I do the job this way. You know, now thematically, you're saying, I am now this really well-known hacker, so of course I would handle the situation without even stepping inside the building. It would give you the ability to create the story the way that you see it playing out. And now I would replay the game because I want to see all the different ways. Where with Watch Dogs 1, there's no reason to replay it. I don't see anyone replaying that game. Yeah, you might play after you've finished to do a couple side quests, see what else is going on, explore the city. But to play the game a second time, there's very little reason to. So that's what I want to see. What else do you want to see in Watch Dogs 2? Sound off in the comments, let me know. And if you haven't read my review, uh, head over to imyourtargetdemographic.com. I review video games, I review movies. I have a lot of conversations like this, so let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe so that you're always getting the latest news from I'm Your Target Demographic. Thanks for watching. <laughs>